Hello and welcome to the 2020 Virtual Red Angus Convention and the Promotions Committee Report. I'm Brandi Buzzard froboth Director of Communications at the Red Angus Association of America. And I'm Tracy Keister. I'm the Editorial Coordinator for the Red Angus Magazine. The mission of the Red Angus Association America's Promotions Committee is to effectively tell the Red Angus story using sound science and real world beef production to advance the Red Angus Association of America as a trusted source of information and genetics for the beef industry. Our committee members are Kay Klompian, chair and board member, Connie Mushrush, board member, Karen Raisland, Lori White, Celeste Satrini, Ann Kimmy, Kelly Massey, Cody Hoffman, myself, staff member, Tracy Keeser, staff member, and Kevin Lamaster, staff. Our promotions committee had a really big year this year. One of the largest and most exciting projects we were able to work on was developing new logos for the RAAA and the JRA. Our committee, as well as staff, worked very closely on developing a new logo for the association that represented the association's commitment to the commercial cattlemen and also had a fresh and modern look. Our biggest asset is our name, Red Angus, so after many proofs and hours spent editing and in conversations with the committee and the developer, we aligned on these new logos for the RAAA and the JRA. The new logos come in several different color iterations, but as you can see, the main ones are red, red and blue, um, which are gonna be used more often. You can also see in the bottom corner, a reversed white version that is used on darker backgrounds. These logos are used on our national advertising campaign, social media, print advertising and printed materials, as well as on clothing, paper goods, and other giveaways. You've probably seen the logo in some advertisements and magazines already, and you will see even more of it moving forward in the coming months. Our promotions and communication strategy is to keep Red Angus in the spotlight, and one way we do this is by distributing at least one press release every month so that we can stay in front of the media. We've done this for the past two to three years and have found that it's been very successful with keeping Red Angus in the news and at the forefront of conversations in the industry. We will continue on this process to turn out press releases on timely topics, association updates, and marketing projects as we move forward in the coming year. This past fiscal year, our team distributed 20 press releases to trade media and industry publications in the US and Canada, highlighting our marketing programs, leadership events, JRA updates, association developments, and staff changes. Along similar lines, at Red Angus, we have a lot of original content, whether it be magazine content in the Red Angus magazine or e-news articles. We have a lot of content that comes from our staff. Every month, our team sends our editorial content out to trade publications and other media outlets for pickup. We had a very successful year in that we had our editorial featured in more than 20 beef industry publications, many of which were major publications, such as Beef Magazine, Drovers, Progressive Cattle, Working Ranch Managing Magazine, and several other regional publications. Through those placements, we were able to reach more than 145,000 beef industry people. We are always working to keep positive Red Angus news in front of people, as well as position Red Angus as a thought leader on beef industry issues and trends. Social media has continued to grow for the Red Angus Association of America, particularly on Facebook and Instagram. We are really excited to be able to pair our magazine editorial content with great visual images that we get in our photo contest. So on the screen, you'll see just a handful full of examples from our Instagram and Facebook feeds, where we are taking a caption from an article or an e-news message and pairing it with a relevant, really engaging photo, and in turn, getting really good feedback or engagement. We also pay close attention to what we call moments in time or special days. For example, you'll see a National Ag Day and International Women's Day post on the screen. We really like to try to set ourselves apart from other outlets, outlets on these days by using a good photo in a memorable way, and we think it's really been working for us over the past few years. In fact, it's worked really well this past year. We had growth of 31% on Facebook, 41% on Instagram, and 34% on Twitter. While sometimes we feel like we're fighting the bear of the Facebook al algorithm, we will work to stay relevant and stay in front of our audience with a positive marketing programs, our positive news, and really engaging photos. Another really exciting project this year in our communications and promotions area was our national advertising campaign. You may remember our previous campaign of the Thrive, 
which we had a very engaging cow that we really loved, but we felt that at the end of two years, we needed to develop a new campaign. Our staff worked as a team to use these images that actually came in through our photo contest um, to create these really engaging ads. And I'm gonna hand it off to Tracy Keister to talk more about the graphic design behind these. Um, so go ahead, Tracy. Thanks, Brandy. Um, we were very excited to get these images, um, all the images in our photo contest, but these stood out to um, help spread the message that we wanted to. And profitability is always the top um, driving force for what we want our people to remember, but we want it to be something that is memorable and unique. So um, profit repeat was something that we um, came up with as a staff, and then we had the tagline, and then just a short amount of copy because we wanted the image to be the memorable part. Um, we do um, a layout in a Z or reverse Z format, which um, leads the eye through the ad. And at the bottom of the ad is our new logo, which is what will be the last thing they remember subconsciously when they read through the, through the ad. You will see these ads um, used um, kind of tag team will will run the bull photo or the bull ad in some publications and then the next time it'll be the cow photo so we will be using those throughout the um, publications that we we send to on a national level and they are also available for affiliates to use um, if you'd like us to include those ads um, with your information And that leads us to the magazine. Um, along with the, the new logo, we also added a new magazine name. We dropped the American off of the front of it because we thought that was creating a little confusion um, onto the association's name. So now we are just the Red Angus magazine and we use the new logo um, as part of our masthead. Um, these are the three magazines that we have featured the logo on. Um, the third one is the October Magazine, which you will be getting shortly in your mailboxes. Um, we continue to have a, a very good circulation for the magazine, and a lot of that is because of our bull buyers. So if someone receives um, a transfer to animal, they receive the magazine for free for that first year. So as you can see by our, our circulation numbers, our membership, or the seed stock part of it, is actually the small part of our publication. So we continue to have a commercial focus with our editorial and um, keep those producer profiles and stories pertaining more to our commercial industry. We have had some advertising pullback um, due to the cancellations with COVID from shows and sales, um, but we've just reduced the size of the magazine or the number of pages to accommodate that and keep our budget on track. So you might see a little bit smaller magazine, but that's just because the advertising doesn't support it. So, Speaking of producer profiles, we still um, continue to talk about our commercial producers who are excelling with Red Angus. We had producer profiles in Colorado, um, Kansas, Montana, Iowa, and North Dakota. And if you have a good producer in your area that you'd like to highlight, be sure to let us know. In addition to our producer profiles, we also do feature articles, which um, are a variety of different topics, kind of try to follow our editorial focus. Um, we did a women um, in ag one in December. We also talked about our hide color project. Um, after the bull sale season, we did a feature on how online auctions kind of saved the day and helped producers continue to sell their bulls and commercial um, cow-calf operations be able to still purchase the bulls that they needed for the sustainability of their operation. We also do some management type articles um, and health issues too. Some of our other features were talking about the um, good foot structure, which is something that we talk about with our, our foot and leg task force with the association. So we put an article out that talked about that. Um, and we did a story on um, pasture to plate marketing and that is expanding as a, as a topic across the United States right now. And we also featured the Red Angus Foundation and um, a feature on that and a few other more um, management things with AI and um, sex semen. 
One new feature in the magazine that you may have noticed in the last issue is our milestones and metrics. You'll find this every issue going forward um, and it's going to be by our member services article. Um, this will just highlight some of the snapshots of what we're doing in each department with Red Angus and it'll change every issue. So if you want to just kind of keep track of what we're doing, that's a great place to look for it. Another exciting thing is the back cover is up for auction. Um, if you watch the October issue, that will have more details in how you can bid on that if that's something that you are interested in. It will be a 10 time advertiser and since it's a premium location, um, it will be up for bids. Uh, Kevin will have more information on that in the October issue. In the meantime, um, we did do some fun things on the back cover. Um, Brandy came up with a phrase or a saying that we could all hold a sign up for. It was kind of the trend at the time. And when we were social distancing, that was a great way to get our message out to our producers and our members. Um, we also promoted the Learn From the Best series. And in the October back cover, we'll be talking about our Red Angus Foundation Pick of the Herd auction. Um, some of you may have utilized our new eBlast service. We did change our rates about a year ago, and it's a straight across fee. It doesn't matter how many times you advertise in the magazine now, it's $125 for every eBlast. Um, there is a rush fee if you do need that eBlast turned around quickly. We did offer some free e-blasts if someone had a sale cancellation or had crowd restrictions due to the pandemic. We did offer two free e-blasts, which is kind of our policy for weather related floods, blizzards, anything like that. So um, we also offer a free e-blast for junior events or fundraisers if we, um, somebody lets us know. And finally, um, um, this is just a snapshot of what our editorial focus is. We try to keep that timely and it's pretty much the same for every issue um, or for every year. Um, we did add Ag Innovation and Technology in November this year. And we try to just have that focus in the magazine just to give it a little cohesiveness and, and timeliness. So with that, I think that kind of um, wraps up our promotions committee report. If you do have any questions or ideas, feel free to email Brandy or I, and you can reach us at media at redangus.org.